Hi, friends. Welcome to another episode of That Sounds Fun. I'm your host, Annie F. Downs, and I'm so happy to be here with you. Before we dive into today's conversation, I want to tell you about one of our incredible sponsors. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. This time of year, or let's be honest, maybe always, the amount of things we're all having to think through is a lot. And sometimes the mental gymnastics of it all can keep me from falling asleep. (laughs) This is where counseling has actually been a really huge help at getting me to process everything going on in and around me and even giving me some ways to calm my mind. Have you considered giving therapy a try? BetterHelp is an incredible option because your session can be done right from home or from your break room or tour bus or wherever you are on the go. Even when things are really busy, they make it easy to prioritize your appointments. BetterHelp has a really simple way to get started. You just fill out a brief questionnaire. We love a quiz. And they match you with a licensed therapist. Finding a therapist that is the right fit for you is so important. And you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So you're sure to be working with someone who is a good Good match. It's done entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and fit in your schedule. It turns out one great way to make your racing thoughts go away is to talk them through. <laughs> Therapy gives you a place to do that so you can get out of those negative thought patterns and find some mental and emotional peace. Get a break from your racing thoughts with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash that sounds fun to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash that sounds fun. Today on the show, I get to talk with my friend Noah Heron. Noah's a pastor, a speaker, a founder of the Gathering Conference. He's become a trusted voice online to both Gen Z and millennials. And his new book, Holy Habits 10 Small Decisions That Lead to a Big Life, comes out tomorrow. Y'all know I love Love having someone on the pod the day before their book comes out. Noah lives here in Nashville and his wife, Maddie, and their two kids, they lead Way Church. They are just like the people in the next generation that we want to know. And you're really going to love this conversation. So here we go. Me and my friend, Noah Heron. Noah, welcome to That Sounds Fun. Thanks for having me. I mean, what a dream. It's about time is the actual answer. This is a literal dream. Oh, me, me I'm too. So I'm so glad. Do you know the two rules about the podcast? You either have to already be friends or someone okay. I wish I was friends with. Done. That's the only rules for the podcast. If you're I'm allowed. Ne- yeah, uh, yeah, you're in the first category. We already <laughs> knew each other. Okay, let's talk first. Y'all are yeah. church planters. Yeah. When you went to college, did you think, I want to be a church planner? Not a chance. No. In fact. Because how old are you? I'm 28. Yeah. I mean, that is, that's a hustle to be a church planter at 28. It's uh, the most exciting and terrifying thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. I think if you asked our mutual friend, Craig. Yes. (laughs) uh, If he thought in college I was going to be a church planter, he'd be, he would have laughed. Yes. Please tell our audience how you are friends with the prince. We call him the prince around here. Well, everyone knew Craig in college. Uh, Was he like so popular? So popular. Optimism out the wazoo. Everyone wanted to be his friend. And I was actually more like friend of friend with Craig and needed a roommate. Uh And then our mutual friend was like, you guys should hang. Yeah. And we ended up rooming together. I think it was both of our last semesters of college. Okay. And Craig was my ride or die. It yeah. was like, hey, what are you what are you doing at 1 a.m.? Want to go to Taco Bell? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love it. So, so when you were at Lee, what did you think you were going to do with your life? I wanted to be a sports broadcaster. Hey, yeah. okay. That was my dream. Did you and your wife meet at Lee? We did not. We met okay. um, post-college. Yeah. Uh, I was leading a college ministry. Oh, and, that's right. You say that yeah. in the book. You say that in the book. I forgot it yeah. wasn't overlapping. Okay, sports. Let's pause there for yeah. a second because love sports what's yeah. your which is your one what's your main one that if you got a job tomorrow mm. what sport are you in you know I think it would be football okay uh, football is the most fun for me to watch yep. and talk about college lo- or NFL either either uh, let's go now Friday Night Lights yes, all of it all in okay. Tim Riggins yeah <laughs> uh, but when it, when we moved here I took on the Titans because I'm yeah. like I gotta I gotta pull for the Nashville teams yeah so I'm believing big things for the Titans this yeah. year yeah Sure. I hope so. <laughs> I hope you're, so. You're a Vandy fan? No, uh, you're Georgia. a Georgia fan. We yeah. share that. Go dogs, Go dogs, right? What a dream. Are we going to three-peat? I don't know. I think that we can make some people listening really mad right now. Yeah. Uh, just talking about how we're ruining college football for everyone else. A little bit. We're God's favorite team. Well, here's, what it, here's what's really ruining college football for everybody except the players is the NIL. Yeah. I'm grateful the players are getting paid for the amount of money they're sure. making their schools. Same. There are players who are making more in college than they're going to make when they get drafted. It's crazy. How's that going to work? And and then you've got all these players who they get dissatisfied with yeah. their playing time and they they got the check. Yeah. And then the next year they're like, all right, who's the highest bidder this year? Yes. I think it's going to be really crazy. 
I, I hope they fix it. Yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. Because I think in five years, we could have college teams that dominate in football yep. because their donors totally. made a way. Totally. Right? It's, it's, um, I think the intent behind it was great, pay the players. And I, I think a lot of people were like, this may actually even the playing field. I think it's going to make it worse for the smaller schools. I think yeah. there's going to be these big schools like Georgia, Alabama, Texas, that Texas. they've got the Matthew money. Matthew McConaughey is about to buy a national championship you know for is. sure. You know he is. All I can't right, blame all him. Right, all right. I would do the same. <laughs> if this was Georgia and I was like, oh, we're top tier and I've yeah. got 80 bazillion dollars. Totally. How can we make us? I know. And and that, I mean, he'll end up winning governor if yeah. he does that because <laughs> they love football so yes. much there. They're just yes. elect him governor. Yes. Who else do you see? If you're predicting the yeah. playoffs, who's who oh. are we seeing in January? Okay. You know, my wife is a University of Alabama graduate. Uh-huh. It pains me to say this, but I, I think that Alabama is going to be there you with think us. So? I think that there's going to be two SEC teams again, okay. Georgia and Alabama. I also see a sneaky team being Oregon. I yeah. think that they're going to be really good this year. They are always really close to being really good, but we won't Man. see another TCU. No, I mean, I don't not think with so. NIL. No, no, no. And then I think Ohio State will be back. Oh, yeah. you're not giving Michigan or USC no, any no. time I, over here? Uh, that sounds fun. I got a lot of Michigan wow. fans in my life, but Ohio State is just, they just got so much talent. Michigan <laughs> fan, I, I mean this in a kind way. Yeah. Michigan fans are like rats. Mm. They just are hiding everywhere. And you don't know until you put some cheese out, and then suddenly everybody <laughs> is a Michigan fan. Yes. You're like, where did all of you rats oh, wow. come from? That illustration just blew I my know. mind. It's not going to go over great with like the Steve Carters oh, of the world. Oh, he's so mad right now. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay. Sorry. People didn't sign up for a sports pod. But listen, whenever you're ready to start a sports oh, man. pod. Will just, you be my first I'm guest? I'm just dying to do a sports pod. Oh, I'm pod. so in. I would do it so fast. We could do, there are some other networks yeah. that do not put light in dark places that are more of a darkness network. Totally. I would, <laughs> what I would give to compete with them in the sports. Oh, man. Ugh. I think I've actually, I think you've said this one time when I was around and I was never more proud to be your friend. I was like, that is a brilliant idea. Someone needs to run with that. The the like positive bar yes. stool idea yes, yes. is brilliant. Brilliant. The Barstool Sports with a uh, kingdom point of view. Yeah, just yeah. people who, who love the Lord. Yeah, okay, so sports pod. All We're right. going to do it. Now, I see it in our future because you got plenty of time. you got a wife yeah. and you've got two kids and you're launching books, you travel and speak, and you're a church planter. Let's do it. Let's go back to church planting. <laughs> We're just really doing all the things. <laughs> this is what being friends with me is like. Everyone knows. Okay, so... How did y'all know church planting mm, when mm. you were going to be a sportscaster? Yeah, I had this life change happen in college my junior year where I really wasn't following the Lord. It's a long story, but I grew up in a Christian home. Parents are pastors, got to college and kind of ran and did my own thing for a few years. And then through a YouTube video in college, I actually like rededicated my life to the Lord. Wow. And Whose video? Do you remember? Yeah, oh, yeah it, was a, it was a sermon by Judah Smith called yeah. Jesus Turned Around that wow. he gave in like 2011. Have you gotten to tell him yet? Oh yeah, I've told okay, him. Good, he knows. Um, it was really, it was really crazy. It was actually in the house I lived in prior to living with our friend Craig, and I just started a Bible study in college. After that, I was just feeling like, man, I, I really want something that can carry this on, this yeah. th- what God's doing in my heart. Yeah. So we started a Bible study and that Bible study has never stopped <laughs> <gasps> What? <laughs> because what happened was it was this Bible study with like 10 of us. And then it ended up growing into a couple hundred college students on Lee University's campus. Wow. And when I graduated college, there was a church in town pastored by this amazing man named Mark Williams. And he said, Hey, what are you doing to pay the bills? I was a bartender at oh, the wow. time. Oh, wow. And he was like, what if you quit bartending and we paid you just to reach college students? And so that's how I got into ministry. I was like, that sounds amazing. Yeah. I'm so in. And for the next five and a half years, I led that college ministry yeah. there at Lee University. And so... Did you bring your Bible study under the churches? We kind did. of So you had a space and you had... Okay. Yeah. And the space was right on campus. You could literally walk to it. It was this 120-year-old wow. building. Wow. And yeah, it was just this amazing, amazing time. And that's it was during that time yeah. that I was like, I think I might be called to this. I yeah. didn't have that like you're called to this, like God met me yeah. in this crazy place. It was just kind of like doors kept opening. Yeah. I enjoyed what I was doing. And yeah. then during the process, I was like, I think I might be called to this. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, just keeps going. Yeah. Why Nashville? What's God doing here that mm-hmm. had y'all planting Way Church here? So we saw a lot of 
really cool things happening. Lots of people moving here. Um, one of the most moved to cities. Yeah. Uh, a lot of young families moving here, which really attracted us. We we do ministry as a family. The last yeah. couple of years, we traveled as a family and just we, we have fun as a yeah. family. So that attracted us. And then we were actually praying about three different cities. And we were really seeking the Lord, and I asked a man named Rich Wilkerson Jr. Yeah, who, of course. I, has he been on been on no, the No, okay. we tried. It, yeah. Schedules didn't work. He is coming. He's awesome. It is a dream of mine. He'd be a great I guest. love that guy. Yeah. So he was speaking for me at our college ministry, yeah. and I asked him because he planted a church when he was around my age, yeah. and I said, "How did That's you decide?" That's when he planted Vu. I think oh, he was wow. thirty or twenty nine. Yeah. So he was, yeah, he uh, right around the same age, and he told me he said, "Oh, that was easy. We just planted in the city we loved the most." And wow. as soon as those words came out of his mouth, my wife looked at me and was like, it's Nashville. Wow. Um, because this was the city that for the first three years of our marriage, anytime we had a chance for a long weekend yeah. or just to get away, we came here because yeah. we loved it so much. Yeah. And we started praying specifically about that. What's the city we love the most? And it was just like, it's Nashville. Yeah. And the reason we felt so strong about planting here was we felt like if we moved to the place we loved, even when the ministry got hard, we wouldn't be tempted to leave unless God really told us to. Wow, so, that is really profound, Noah. Mm. That idea of if we love the place mm -hmm. and the job gets hard, yeah. we'll be more likely to stay. If yeah. you hate the place totally. and you feel like you're in the desert anyway. Yeah. Wow. And I, I know like I, I have several church planting friends and for for all of them, it's been a different story. Some of them are like, we just had this crazy burden. Certainly. We just, um, but when we prayed, we prayed for almost two years about where oh to plant. Gosh. And when we were praying about it, we just never had any of that. Yeah. Um, we, we had a burden for different types of people, but we felt like all those types of people were in pretty much any city in America. Yeah. And so we just went with, man, we love Nashville. There's a reason God's put this love in our heart and let's just go do it. When you and Maddie met, I mean, did she already have church planting in her heart or was it kind of like, hey, I'm called to this. What do you think? Mm. Like, talk to me about as a not married yet person. Yeah. Talk to me about when you are sure of what you're called to. Mm. What was the God story of how she was also because y'all passed her together. Yeah, we do. And uh, that was actually terrifying because I had been in a long relationship in college. She had done the same. So I was single for a few years before I met Maddie. And I was pretty like, I'm not dating anyone for the foreseeable future yeah. kind of a place. And then I met her and yeah. I was like, well, I would date her. You I know? mean, yeah, you talk in the book about I saw her <laughs> yes. and I was like, I'll marry her. Yes, yeah, I'll yeah, marry yeah. Her. And so we started dating, but I, I think I, um, any other person I might have freaked out. It was our second date and I just was like, hey, I really like you and, and I'm really interested in getting to know you better, but there are a couple things you need to know about me before wow. like we go. I don't want to waste your time. Yeah. And I said, number one is I'm looking for a wife. So I'm not like trying to date for a long time. I'm trying to like pursue a relationship with someone I'm going to marry. And so I'm just in a little bit more of a serious spot than just yeah. casually dating. And so if you, if that freaks you out, that's fine. I yeah. just don't want to waste your time. And then I said, the other thing is, I know without a shadow of a doubt, God's called me to plant a church, which is not the most uh, sexy life yeah. and is probably going to be really difficult. But I also just want you to know, like, that is in my heart. And it's, I want to be respectful of your time. And so if this, any of this feels like a waste, please let me know. And then there were a few other things that I shared with her that I felt really passionate about. And I said, so at any time, you can break up with me. I just didn't want us to get no, like attached. And then she shared with me like kind of her, her like, hey, this is in my heart. And what I didn't know about her at the time was that her grandfather was a church planter. Oh, wow. And so she at that point had never felt called to plant a church, but she did feel really called to just love on people and yep. do some sort of ministry. Yep. And so at that point, we were like, okay, we both feel fine about yeah. where this is at. Let's keep dating. Yeah. And we got engaged uh, four months after that conversation. Yeah. yeah I mean, so. because I think that's so wise because what you led and what y'all did, and she could have led it too. We're not having one of the doing that thing, you know, mm. but what the conversation y'all got to have is like, here's some baseline things that yeah. we could end up really liking each other after totally. we cross these gates, but we just need to put these gates here totally. to make sure, because you can fall in love with anybody. Absolutely. And so that's the problem, yeah. right? Is one of the scary things about going on dates with people who don't believe what you believe hmm. is you can fall in love with anybody. Absolutely. And so that's a beautiful example of you leading so well, Noah, uh, that you led you. that so well. Of like, it was very scary. I was like, sure. my head was like, don't say that. <laughs> 
just like get her to fall in love with you. Like this yes. is like the best thing that's ever happened to you. Don't yeah. mess this up. But yeah. I just figured it's it's easier to have the hard conversation on date two yeah. than it is date 20 and yes. then deal with the heartbreak and the fallout yes. of that. And yes. I'd actually gone through that with a, a previous relationship with an awesome girl that yeah. we just weren't right for each other. Yeah. And so I didn't want to do that again. Yeah. So. I was really grateful because uh, I went on a couple of dates with someone and then he just went like, our lives don't match. And I was mm. like, great. Thank you. Thank you for telling me at two dates versus like two years. Oh my goodness. Like if you feel like your life and my life don't match here, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I wish you well. Yeah. We wave at each other when we see each other. I mean, it's like so we can be breezy friends. because it was the first gates didn't open. Yeah. The first gate of are we attracted opened. The second gate maybe sure. where of like do our lives That's a great match way to put it. did not open. Yeah. And it just went, okay, great. Before there was a ton of hurt, before there was a ton of it's like, so wise. weirdness. I love that. Oh man, it is such a gift. So Maddie was on board. She was on board. Yeah. I actually, when I read your book this weekend, I literally repented to the Lord because Friday night I sat at a football game with some friends and we talked about how it doesn't feel like anyone's planting churches in the next generation. Wow. And then I literally read two books by church planters in their twenties <laughs> this weekend. And I was like, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So are there a lot of you? There's not. You're you're right in your observation. In fact, a lot of church planting organizations are now cl- they have enough data to prove your your point and it's actually a very small percentage compared to previous generations that are. I think that there's a lot that comes with that. I think we're right on the other side of COVID, so they just our generation just watched a lot of church planters really struggle through yes, that. Yes. I think the other thing is a lot of um, the next generation is more interested in church revitalization, which yeah. is so which important. Is and yeah, I course. think that that is a wave that we're going to see a bunch of in our generation. And what would that look like? Does that look like your friends going, hey, I'll come on staff. There's mm. only 50 people who go to this yep. church and, and the capacity is 10,000. Totally. 50 people in a church is great, but if the yeah. capacity used to be. Yep. And so... We'd love to come in as a staff member and then hopefully help rebuild and get the next generation to come here. Is that what that I looks like? So. I think so. I know of even some churches here in Nashville that the pastor is getting close to retirement. Doesn't have like they have a building. They've yeah. got a congregation of fifty to two hundred people. They don't have a ton of money coming in, but they're like, I'm ready to retire, and we don't have the right person to hand off to. And I think the stability that comes with man, there's there's a building already in yes. place. There's a core group of people I could come in and shepherd them. Them and then maybe even like lead it into the future. Yeah. I think that's really attractive to a lot of young people. I think it's both. We need both. Yeah, um, I agree. I, Maddie and I, we just felt like our leadership style would work best starting from nothing and, yeah. and kind of building culture from the ground up. But man, sometimes I the last nine months of fundraising and trying to find spaces, Dude. I'm like, man, I probably should have done the revitalization <laughs> thing. <laughs> Looking back on it, my skill set would have been great yes. and in our church already existing. Yes. I would love for you to speak to this as well, because I imagine your generation, I'm 43, so I'm mm. like right above you. Mm-hmm. Ish. There's a whole 10 You're years right between. There. I'm right here above you. But I am watching my peers blow up their lives mm. and lose leadership in the church. Mm-hmm. So these are men who are my age, mm-hmm. who are right around me. Mm. And so I'm watching them as a peer. Mm-hmm. What are you watching them as? Mm. Uh, heroes. Yeah. You know, I think that's been wow. one of the hardest things uh, as a young pastor is like watching these guys that like, I based my ministry around um, and, and realizing at the same time, like that could happen to me. Yes, um, me too. Like I'm so close to that. Not in like, hey, I came in here with some plan to go blow up my life, but I just am very aware of just how naturally destructive I can be yeah, as, a, yeah. as a human being. And so... On the one hand, it's been this like sad, sad thing to watch literally people that I've looked up to, learned from, and gotten to meet yeah. and never would have thought yes. there's any way. But then at the same time, I think it's been something that's going to and has helped my family set up safeguards and yes. that will hopefully keep us from making some of those decisions that we could easily make too. That's when, when I was reading Holy Habits, I thought... He has put up all the safeguards you can possibly put up, mm. right? I mean, we still are human and we still mm. live on earth, but but you really have, I mean, these 10 small decisions that lead to a big <laughs> life, these these 10 things you've put in place for y'all, mm. I, I don't know what else we do, mm. right? I mean, it feels yeah. like if you are willing to have those habits, yeah. that's what we do. Yeah. When I watched 
one of my heroes do it when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And when I watched him blow up his life, I said the same thing you said. I said, Mm. it could be me. Yeah. When it's a guy I don't know or a woman I don't know that blow up their lives publicly, I go, oh, man, that's so sad. And when it's someone I know, I go, how am I different? Totally. How am I different? Totally. No one wakes up and decides they're going to do that, you know? And that's the thing. It's like it just – it was a reminder to me – that those decisions are not the first decisions. They're, they're little decisions a, a, right. along the way. That's and right, no. um, I really, really, really want to protect my soul from being callous to the small decisions that yeah. seem inconsequential but are actually leading to much bigger ones that could kill my life. Yes. Um, so anyways, thank you for saying that uh, about the habits. Um, yeah. We are really believing that they're going to help keep us there as well. Yeah, but, um, I think so. That sounds fun. Hey, friends, just interrupting this conversation to share about one of our amazing partners, KiwiCo. Y'all know I am a fan of KiwiCo. Their creative kits are the cutest and most fun ideas for kids that keep our mini BFFs busy and help them learn a little something, too. Whether you're home a lot on the weekends or heading out on adventures, KiwiCo invites kids and kids at heart to celebrate the season of discovery through hands-on fun. KiwiCo delivers monthly science and art projects that turn curiosity into creativity. From creating giant bubbles to experimenting with ice cream, kids will learn in a seriously fun hands-on way. There really is something for everyone. They've got subscription lines for kids of all ages, ranging from infants and preschoolers all the way to teens. KiwiCo encourages kids to get outside and explore and keeps them off their screens. Awesome project from the KiwiCo store like the Bottle Rocket Kit helped to turn the outdoors into a playground of learning and fun. Plus, KiwiCo makes it easy to take discovery on the go. Everything you need is in the crate, including materials and easy to follow instructions. It is the perfect travel boredom buster for the entire family. You can get 50% off, you guys, 5-0 off your first month, plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com slash that sounds fun. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O dot com slash that sounds fun. And one more amazing partner I get to tell you about, Chime. Okay, you may think a credit score is no big deal, but if you're dealing with a low credit score or no credit score at all, that could be a problem for your future financial goals. That's why millions of our friends swear by Chime's secured credit builder Visa credit card. Credit builder is a great way to build credit. You build your credit score safely with everyday purchases and on-time payments. Plus, there's no annual fee or a credit check to get started. On top of that, their online checking account has tons of benefits that you'll love, like their fee-free overdraft of up to $200, plus you can get paid up to two days early with direct deposit, all while managing your money on the go 24-7. Sounds like a win all around, you guys. Chime has no monthly fee, minimum balance, or overdraft fees. You get access to 60,000 plus fee-free ATMs. That's more than the top three national banks combined, y'all, and you can easily find one near you with the Chime app. And you can pay friends through Chime, no matter what bank account they use, and cash out your money without a fee. Your credit's a big deal, so build yours up with Chime. Just open a Chime checking account with a $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash that sounds fun. That's Chime.com slash that sounds fun. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank NA, member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On-time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Okay, now back to our conversation with Noah. That sounds fun. Is some of what you're seeing happen in the church with my generation Mm -hmm. of leaders struggling, Mm -hmm. is that keeping your generation from going into ministry? Um, You know, I'm sure it is for some. I think, honestly, the thing that's that's keeping many of them going from going into ministry is that there are less people who are following Jesus in my generation in general. I think that's the first thing. And then there's even like out of the people who are following Jesus, I I honestly think, and it's one of the reasons that I wrote on habits, I think our generation struggles with biblical literacy so much that a lot of them who even go to church, the only time that they're even getting the Bible is when their pastor preaches from it. Mm -hmm. And so they're just seeing all these other things that are available to them. And I think that a lot of times the world is just better at making them look more fun than ministry is. 
and they've heard about maybe your generation talk about how hard ministry is and how difficult it is and what a burden it is. And it absolutely is difficult and it is a burden. But one of our core values at our church is we have fun. Yes. I can't wait for everybody to go see y'all's Instagram. Y'all have so much fun. We have so much fun. Yeah. And I don't want to do ministry if it's not fun to me. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? And so I think, you know, let's make ministry fun again yes. is kind of something that yes. we say on our team a lot. Yes. And I think that that would actually help so much with young leaders. I mean, am I right? Do I remember reading? Did you tell us to yeah. use confetti? Yes. yes. That's, a, that's a chapter. In yeah, the book, throw, you throw said confetti. celebrate everything. Yeah. Just absolutely. And then you yeah. go through and list. You said celebrate yourself, celebrate others, and celebrate the bad times. Hmm. Why celebrate in the bad times? Why yeah. did that matter to you? Oh, man. And why I, are you teaching that? Well, I think it's been the bad times I've grown the most. Yeah. It's been the bad times that God's spoken to me the most. We just talked about this as a leadership team, how a lot of times when God doesn't answer a prayer, when we're ready to go to the next season, it's like, where is God? Yeah. And almost every time now looking back on my life that I've asked that, it's like, man, God was not doing anything like around me, but he was doing so much inside of me. Yeah. And so when I feel like I'm in those bad moments, I'm I'm trying, this is a habit that is one of the harder ones to practice. I'm trying to celebrate that in the moment and not yeah. waiting for a year later or two years later, right. because I'm like- Don't wait till it's a testimony. No, right. like God is like, God, well, God, what are you trying to teach me right now? Like there's a yes. reason you're not moving right now. So wow. what are you trying to get into me yes. instead of getting- me out of this. Yes. No, that's so good. Okay. When you're writing Holy Habits, I mean, you already, a lot of our friends listening know this, you already travel and speak a lot. You're on tons of stages. You are leading in a lot of ways online and in person. Why a book? Why Mm. did it have to be Holy Habits that we can hold in our hands versus why did you not just do like a bunch of TikToks? Oh, well, I love to read. So I've always dreamed of writing something. And there was a book that really changed my life when, um, right after I rededicated my life in college, it's called uh, Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster. Richard Foster. He's like Yoda. I know. He's like Yoda. And I read that and I was like, this is the book that I needed right now. Like, this is the book. And so. I do think that books, you can, it's like getting coffee with someone that you've never met and you're getting to like learn the things that have impacted them the deepest. But Mm -hmm. like there are people that I will never be able to meet, but I can still learn from them. And so I thought, man, like I think that habits, particularly holy ones, spiritual disciplines is what my generation really needs in this season of our life. And and the reason I believe that is traveling the last couple of years, I would get reinvited back to the same conference or the same event. And I would see people in the altar literally could remember the year before praying with that student or that young adult to be set free from whatever it was that they were struggling with. What you name the addiction and they are coming back the next year praying for the same thing. They felt like they were set free and then they weren't. And the whole premise and the heart behind the book was that an encounter with Jesus will set you free, Yes. but your habits are what keep you free. Yes. And I think for my generation, it's like, it's not enough to just see the TikTok. It's not enough to just see the real, like if we're not changing the way we're spending our time, Mm -hmm. our heart is never gonna match the encounter or the little blurb that we saw. And so I really just think like, if you want your life to change, you have to look at the way you're spending your time and I think the most effective way to make sure your time is being spent the right way is to have good habits. Yeah. So. How did you pick these 10? Were there ones you left out? There were some possible ones yeah. that I had. You like, didn't talk on a ton radar. about fasting. Yeah, I didn't. And talk. I know it's in your life. So <laughs> I was like, oh, he had to leave yeah. some of these out. I was trying to think what are the ones particularly that are most like I don't want to say like gateway habits. No, that's it. I think that's exactly what okay, you did. Okay. I think that's what makes this so good. Mm. I think that's a great phrase. It's okay. gateway habits. There, so like ga- gateway, <laughs> gateway habits. habits. I love it. Now I'm going to start describing yes, it. Yes, of that. course. Just ones that are like repeatable and yep. and don't require you to like have some crazy life change. It's yep. like every single person could implement these 10 habits yep. this week. Yeah, that's right. And it really wouldn't require you to like quit your job or like right. change your schedule. Like right. my wife, two kids under two, starting a church like does all of these habits you know like it doesn't matter how much time you have you could do it yeah that's i mean one of the things i wanted to ask you about when i was reading it is you do a lot on rest which you know Mm. we love talking about sabbath around here the people who respond to me with the most volume when Mm. i talk about sabbath rest Mm. are young families who are like what's it annie 
when yeah. in the world am I supposed to rest? <laughs> so you outline it really beautifully in Holy Habits. Will you talk a little bit about the way y'all do Sabbath does not mm-hmm. look the same as the way I do Sabbath. Okay. So what does it look like for y'all? How are y'all able to rest with two littles? Uh, well, our kids are so much fun. They are so much work. Yeah. And it is such a gift, that work. But We just try to do that one day, 24 hours. We do from dinner to dinner the next day. So ours right now is on Thursday nights at dinner until Friday nights at dinner. And we just try to fill that 24 hours with as much fun or as much worship as possible. Those Those are the two things. Okay. So everything else goes away. I don't do any work on those days. It is just, if this is not fun to me, like refilling me, or if this is not like seen as worship to the Lord, then I'm not going to participate in it. And What's your phone rules? Yeah. So we still have the phone on, Yeah. but if we see a text from anyone on our team or any of that stuff, like it just doesn't get answered. And our yeah. team knows that we're yeah. like very vocal about it. And it's something we want them to implement as well. Yeah, you know, right. we can't make them take a, a Sabbath, but our hope is that when they don't get a response to us, they're like, oh man, like they're on Sabbath. Yeah, I should do that right, too. That's right. But it's actually been really fun to like creatively think, what could we do this week that would be really fun and life-giving to us? The activities have changed with kids, but our kids nap and we like even try to plan around those naps. We have figured out ways to sacrifice financially during the week to where we can get a babysitter on Thursday night so that we can have date night. And when I tell you like the way that we look forward to Thursday nights, uh, knowing that we've got childcare and that we can go to one of the amazing restaurants in Nashville and just spend like three uninterrupted hours. I know not everyone can, can do that, but man, that has been like the most, talk about throwing confetti and celebrating. It's like when it gets to Thursday at five o'clock, it is like, it feels like we're waking up on Christmas morning, which is how I think you should feel when you're Sabbathing. It should be like something that you are truly looking forward to, or I don't think that you're doing it right. Right. And so sleeping in probably is not one of the parts of your current Sabbath resting. No, No. it's not. We we wake up almost the same time every day. And I would say the difference is like, we always wake up, spend time with our kids before we work in the mornings. Yeah. The difference is it's like, we're going to go to the park and we don't have like a time that we're going to start work. And when we're at the park, like we're going there and we're trying, not just trying, like we're leaving the phones in the car and we're being present with each other. Yeah. Like we love spending time as a family that is like really life giving to us. But during the nap times is, you know, on a Sabbath, we might take a nap or yeah. we might my wife and I are big board game people. Yeah. I don't know if you're a, a game person. We might play Bananagrams for three oh, hours. Oh, I love Bananagrams. You know? um, it's just like there's something that reinvigorates your soul knowing you don't have to produce something yes. and that there's no time limit around yes. what you're doing that day. Have you all started playing Tinsy? Do you know Tinsy? I've never heard of okay. that. I got you. Oh. I'm going to get you some Tinsy okay. because it okay. is so fun. Amazing. And it's like a dice game. Oh, I'm in. But it's an easy one to play by yourself or with two or with four or whatever. It I'm is so, so fun. You talk in the book, speaking of your schedule, you do, one of the things I loved was you talking about your one minute prayers. Mm-hmm. You did something in here that I want all of us to do as we're writing is you're like, here's my actual schedule today. Yeah. Like, here's what I get up at this time. Here's what I'm doing. So mm. it's not this vague, like, are you spending time with the Lord sometime? You're like, here's literally when I do it. But then you talk about one minute prayers in that schedule. Will Mm -hmm. you teach us that? Yeah. Okay. So I did it right before I rang your doorbell to come in here. It's basically after every task or meeting or thing throughout the day, I'm going to take 60 seconds just to spend time talking to God. And that is not like some crazy spiritual thing. I mean, I, I pulled into the parking lot downstairs. I came up the elevator and right before I rang the doorbell, I just stopped for a second and said, God, thank you so much for providing this friendship with Annie. Thank you for this amazing opportunity to be on this podcast that I've listened to literally dozens of times. (laughs) And God, please help my voice not to crack. Like, you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) you're doing great so far. It's just, we can edit it out if it happens. Thank you, Craig. So it's just including God in your calendar. Yeah. I would hear that verse preached about pray without ceasing all the time. And I'm like, how in the world do people spend three hours a day praying? Like one, like, I don't know that I have that much to say. And two, I don't have that much time with these two kids in this church. And then I actually first heard John Eldridge yeah. talk about how he practiced the habit of gratitude for yeah. one minute a day. Yeah. And that really challenged me. I was like, okay, I'm not really doing that either. Yes. But what if I just started with talking to God one minute 
every hour. Yeah. Just one minute wow. every hour. And that has radically changed my prayer life. Wow. Sometimes it's just thanking God for yeah. something that just happened. Other times it's asking God for something. Other times it's, you know, God, I'm really nervous right now. Will yeah. you just give me peace yeah. in this moment? But it's allowed me, I think, to develop a prayer life that I, I know I've never had before. Yeah, we we do the one minute pause before our staff meeting. I love it from John Eldridge's app, and yes. I mean it is. I do a lot. I did one this morning too, but it is such a moment for. I mean, I think at his office, I think they like do it at ten and two or something. Oh, they wow. have like twice a day they stop and all do the one minute wow. pause at the same time. I love that. People, whether this was caught or taught mm. to me, I don't know, but. I've always thought like, well, real prayer, quote, quote, has to last an hour. Yeah. Or re- if I'm really praying, I'm on my knees for two hours in the morning. And the more I have to do, the more hours I should be praying. Mm. So how do you balance the like, there is a mm. perseverance and a contending yeah. version of prayer. Totally. Is that part of your rhythms too? Is that like, if, if I have a little more time in the morning, if I have a longer drive, mm. or are you like, no, I still do like 30 minutes in the morning. Yeah. So my morning time is my my favorite time. Yeah. Uh, I protect it at all costs. Me too. I've quit doing breakfast. Yes. I just can't. I, I, I was like, I cannot do breakfast meetings anymore yes. because I, I love my morning time. It matters so much to me. Yes. And I would say my morning prayer time has actually looked different in different seasons of my life. Mm-hmm. Not that it's been there some seasons and not been there others, but I remember when before we moved to Nashville, my morning time almost always included about 30 minutes of prayer, which I oh, was wow. I, that was the most I'd ever done. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is crazy. And I felt really like probably self-righteous, probably wasn't good, but I remember feeling <laughs> like I can pray 30 minutes now and I'm doing yeah. this for the last six months. But I think something that is so cool about God is like he will... That worked in that season of my life. And right now I'm spending the same amount of time during my quiet time. But where God has been speaking to me more is I'll finish reading the Bible and then I'll spend a few minutes praying, maybe five minutes just praying. I've got like a little prayer journal of people in our community that we're praying for, pray for our family, pray for our church. And then I love going on walks. And yes, so, you talk a lot about walking oh, in the book. Yeah. I will just go on a walk yeah. with no music, yeah. no headphones. And God has spoken to me more during that silent time. Dude, your whole chapter on silence it, is so good. That is like, I think that's a part of prayer is like, I'm so convicted that so many times when I pray to God, I may have even said this in the book. I think I did. It's more like a megaphone than a telephone where I'm just like yelling at the Lord, not literally, but just God do this and God, I need you. And I I know God wants me to do that, but I just wonder how many times I've like yelled the prayer and then hung up the phone and not (laughs) listened to anything he had to say to me. And so my prayer time right now is like five, 10 minutes a day. And then it's just like silence for a 20 minute walk. And God is just like breathing into my soul yeah. in that time. I can't wow. even describe it. Some of my best ideas for our church have come from that yeah. time. Some of the best ideas for our marriage have come from that time. Yeah. God will randomly drop someone in my heart during that time and I'll, I'll send them a text. And the fruit that's come from those little text messages yes. has blown my mind. Yes. It's just been a deeply meaningful morning time. Okay, the, the lap around my neighborhood yeah. takes me eight minutes oh. from door, make a circle yeah, back yeah. to your door. Is it okay if I just start for that long? Yes. 20 minutes feels really long yes. for me to not have headphones. I know, something going. Yes. I know. I'm a big podcast guy too. So I'm always tempted to like, I could be getting sermon material or something. Yeah, that's my problem is I'm like, I've got to get stuff done. This is yeah. my always problem. But I'm always yeah. like, I could be listening to something that totally. I need to listen to before. Totally. You know, but eight minutes is okay to start. It's great. I, I know that you're friends with uh, John Mark Comer yeah. and his teachings on Sabbath and silence and all this stuff have really f- deeply formed me. The new practicing the way on solitude. I'm oh. like, I mean, I'll listen to it at some point, he's, but I'm not Russian. <laughs> he's brilliant. He's brilliant. He, he has this line. I'm going to mess it up, but he says something along the lines of you're actually more productive when you force yourself to be unproductive. Yeah. And that... I was like, I don't know about that, John. Like, you're over on the West Coast. You're yeah, chilling. It's so much cooler you know? over there. Yeah, yeah. But the more I've leaned into that, the yeah. more I actually believe them. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, so I just needed you to give me permission. When I read this last <laughs> night, I was, I feel the pull of, I mean, and you and I talked about this a little bit before, but having surgery a month ago, mm-hmm. trying to let my body heal mm-hmm. and then also deal with the emotions and the spiritual and all the parts yeah. of that thing happening so fast. I just haven't really opened that folder as much as I could. Yeah. And I think when I think about walking for eight minutes yeah. in silence, I'm like, 
what will we even talk? How do I even start? Right. Where do I even start? And so the first time you did silence or yeah. the first little month or two months of practicing it, was it hard? Oh, it was so hard. Okay, great. Thanks. And, and, um, That's what I needed to hear. Honestly, I think uh, the thing that it did for me, like for the first week was it just gave my brain a break and yeah. it wasn't like I didn't hear from the Lord. But I think one of the signs of intimacy in any relationship is like the ability to be silent with that person. Mm. And I see now just how how much closer I feel to the Lord because there are some mornings where I still, I won't get anything. Yeah. You know, I'll walk, but I never regret that time. Yeah. Because do you do I'm, the same path every day? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it's t- There's a school next to our house. I walk okay. to the school and, and turn around and walk back. And the time that I go in the mornings is, is really early. There are like a few teachers there. Yeah. And so I'm like waving to the same teachers, <laughs> you know, like this guy's crazy. He's not it's running. It's like the first year teachers who get there really early. Yeah. 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 So the class, but it, it's just, I, yeah, I would highly recommend it. It's my favorite habit, I think. Really? Uh, and, and it may just be because it was it was the newest one to me. Yeah. Like I'd never tried yeah. that. I'd always, you know, attempted prayer, yes. read the Bible, yes. all those things, gone to church, discipled, but I'd never really tried silence. And yeah. I think I was missing out for a long time. Yeah, I think I'm missing out. <laughs> and I think I'm afraid. I think it's both. I think I'm missing out. I think I'm afraid. I think both of those feel really true in this season. Hey, friends, just interrupting this conversation one more time to share about another amazing partner, Indeed. Whether you're a small and mighty team like us or a large corporation, Indeed is the hiring tool you need to find the talent that you want. No matter the size of your company, when you're ready to hire, I'm guessing you're already low on bandwidth, so no one has time for hiring to become a second job. That's where Indeed comes in. You can hire faster and better with their matching platform. We've always found the right team members through Indeed, and we'll absolutely use them again when we're ready to hire, which is not right now. We are full and happy, but man, when we want to hire, we use Indeed. So get this, according to Comscore, 81% of U.S. online job seekers search for jobs on Indeed each month. This means it's the exact right place to be advertising your job openings. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed does the hard work for you. They show you candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your description immediately after you post. So you can hire faster, and what's even better, Indeed's the only job site where you only pay for applications that meet your must-have requirements. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash sounds fun. The offer is good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at indeed.com slash sounds fun. Indeed.com slash sounds fun. Terms and conditions apply. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. And that link and pretty much every other link you could ever hope for are in the show notes below or in Friday's AFD Weekend Review email that you can sign up for also in the show notes below. So make sure you check those out. And friends, don't forget, we told you last week, we want you to nominate a teacher you love for our So Happy to Know You giveaway. The book comes out September 19th, and we're choosing 50, 50, 50 teacher winners who will get a signed copy of the book and a note from me, the little Annie plush doll for their classroom, and a $10 Amazon gift card. And then we're choosing one grand prize teacher winner, and I'm going to come read the book to your school. I cannot wait. So go pre-order order the book and nominate a teacher who had a huge impact on your life or a teacher you know and love. Entries close on September 18th at 8 p.m. Eastern, and you have to have pre-ordered the book in order to nominate a teacher. So head to SoHappyToKnowYou.com to enter after you've pre-ordered from wherever you love to buy books. We'll put that link in the show notes as well. And now back to finish up our conversation with Noah. That sounds fun. One of the things you did beautifully in here too, that a lot of people are asking us about Mm. is discipleship Mm -hmm. because it feels scary to people. Mm -hmm. I mean, silence feels scary to me. Discipleship is easy. Other people are like, I can be silent all the time. I don't know how to find someone to disciple me or for me to disciple. disciple, Sure. And so why do those both matter to you? Mm. Why do you need someone who is pouring into your life? And why do you need to be investing in someone else? Yeah, I think my life would look drastically different if I hadn't been discipled by the people I've been discipled by. Uh, My marriage would look different and not in a good way. Yeah. My family would look different. I 
cannot express how much it has changed my life to be discipled by men who are leading their families well and yeah. who love the Lord at 50 the way I want to love the Lord at 50. I mean, yeah. it, I, I feel like it is allowing me a head start yes. on this journey of yeah. just life yeah. to learn the lessons that they learned at my age yes. and not have to experience them yeah. for myself. Yeah has just been a cheat code, honestly. Yeah. And Discipleship is a cheat code. It's a cheat code. That's exactly right, it's dude. It's a cheat code. That's exactly right. And in the same way, I just believe so strongly, like your legacy is not what you leave behind. It's mm-hmm. who you leave behind. Mm-hmm. And I really, really, really want my life to count. And yeah. I don't mean that by the metrics or any of those things. I, I want the relationships I have to be real and for for my life to look like Jesus, where yeah. like I'm building the kingdom, not just through what I do, but the people that I'm around and like yeah. pouring into. Yeah. And so I'm a big believer in it. And I think discipleship is, it is very intimidating, especially like the first time you try it. If you're, if you're, <laughs> you can, I think when you're thinking about discipling someone, the way that the devil kind of gets you from not doing it yeah. is like, who do you think you are? Yeah, like, you want to right, disciple someone? Like, right. that's the voice you hear. And then from the other side of it, it's like, who do you think you are? Like, they don't want to invest in yeah, you. Who like, wants why to would they? You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And they don't have time for you. No. Yeah, and right. the truth is, is like, the person that you want to disciple is wishing that you would disciple them. Yes. And the person that you want to learn from wishes someone would ask them something. Yes. And so just putting myself in those two different perspectives have helped uh, kind of alleviate the nervousness about it. Yeah. But it's still hard every time. Oh, you will laugh at that. I mean, I, I like you kind of grew up in church. Mm-hmm. I grew up, we went to discipleship groups all through middle school it. and high school. So this is like, this is a part of my faith. It's been a really yeah. active part. And I sat with someone new yesterday and I got weird about if she wanted us to keep meeting. Like, I mean, and <laughs> I was like, I disciple a handful of yeah. young women right now. I've discipled young people for a lot of my life. And mm. yesterday I still got weird about yep. it. Yep. It just never it stops. It doesn't go away. No, it doesn't go away. I There's was like, always insecurity do you there. want, and, and I'm the older one. So mm. it's a younger girl who's reached out to me wow. and I'm the one who feels weird yeah. being like, are we going to do yeah. this again? When, when you do it, like when you agree to disciple someone, do you agree to like a certain amount of time? Hey, we'll do this for a year. Or does it kind of just have like a we're just going to do this until it feels yeah. like we don't want to do it anymore. So far, they have all either been school year based. Okay. So they were college students yep. or they were like that. Now, uh, the majority of my girls are on staff at church. Oh, cool. So it's just kind of like, as long as you're here, yeah. this seems like seems, makes sense. Yeah. So I do you that. draw, do you say, well, let's do a year at a time? Because I bet always, that would really help. I've always done it the other way. Like what okay. you just said, yeah. it's just like, let's just you know, go until it doesn't feel like it's supposed to go anymore. Yeah, um, yeah. But right now I'm being discipled by a guy that I said, will you give me a year? And wow. then we're, and then we're done. Cause yeah. I, I wanted, he's a busy guy and I wanted him to know like, there's an end in sight. I, yes. I asked very specific, like, this is what discipling would look like, like what wow. I want to learn from you yeah. because I wanted him to see exactly what he was signing up for yes. and there not to be any surprises. And so far it's working really great. I'm nervous. Our time ends in December. Oh no. And I'm like, and oh now- no, I kind of want to re-up. <laughs> and so I just wanted to ask because I now I'm like approaching this time and I might bring back another year yeah, ask. Yeah, I think you to could ask to re-up. Can, yeah. yeah. I've done some of those before. But it was always around, hey, when you come back to school next year yeah. in Nashville, if yeah. you want to do this again. Very cool. You know, so I like it's, that. it's always, it's, but I like you doing that. I do think there's, so, I think about that with who disciples me of like, do I need to give her some like, An out? you aren't going to have to do this forever. <laughs> Let's do this till the end of 24 and then talk again. I'm, sur- I'm sure that they don't want you to do that. They how, just want you to How keep often do you, like, what's your communication look like with the people that disciple you mm-hmm. and that you disciple? Yeah. So I'm being discipled by two guys right now. One is like life discipleship. So like I asked him, Hey, I I have five kids. I'm like, Hey, your family, I've been around you guys in a ton of different settings and they genuinely love you. Like it is like a genuine love and it's not like you're just home all day. So I really want to learn like that rhythm. And so I stole this line from another mutual friend of ours, Grant Skeldon. He has this discipleship line where he says, discipleship is not being added to someone's schedule. It's being included in what they're already doing. Oh, that's good. And so I'm like, hey, when your daughter has volleyball games, can I go? 
can like oh and can, i'll just sit with you can my wife and i come and support wow. and we just be there like That's so would love cool. it no. um hey i know that you have this business trip coming up and like i love 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 leadership and you're leading this amazing team i would love to just be in your staff meeting can i can i pay for my plane ticket and go Brilliant. to this one staff meeting Brilliant. with you so that's what that looks like mm -hmm. and we have a once a month coffee where i'm coming in with a list of questions yes. about what i've observed yes. in the last month but then i have a guy who planted a church like 10 years ago yeah. is leading this you know church that is just making a great impact in their city and I'm I'm being discipled from afar from him where it's just like a twice a month Zoom call yeah. where I'm just basically saying, here are all the problems that I'm going through. <laughs> yeah. How did you Help. go yeah, through this? Yeah, that's you know? right. That's right. And so I think that that is probably closer to mentorship than um, the discipleship relationship yeah. that I have with the family guy. But I, man, both of those relationships, I yeah. would not trade for the world because yeah. I'm just learning so, so much yeah. from both Nancy, of them. who disciples me, sends a Bible verse every morning. I've heard you talk about Nancy, and <laughs> she sounds like a straight-up woman of God. I mean, she is a baller. <laughs> she's coming on the podcast very soon, oh, everybody. You're going to hear. Yeah, Let's you're going to hear in October. I mean, she's it's incredible. Have you heard me tell the story about how one time Angie Smith and I were on a plane together, and we both got the same text from Nancy at the same time, and no. I was like, oh, I thought she just did that for me. So everyone Nancy meets with, she sends the same verse wow. to in the morning. Or she did in that season. I don't wow. know if she still does. But I thought, that is brilliant. I could, And so literally a few weeks ago, one verse stood out to me. And I thought, this is it. Wow. I should send this to everyone. So yeah. I sent it to all the girls that I meet with. And 90% of yeah. them said, oh, my gosh. This is what I needed to hear today. Thank you wow. so much for thinking of me. And I was like, that's almost, that's true. Heart but the also, message. Yeah. Heart the message. <laughs> also, they, they went to everybody. So <laughs> I sent them individually. But I mean, it's just, it, it does not take much. Yeah. As the, you know this from who you're meeting with too, at, that you're discipling. It does not take much to make someone feel seen mm. by the person who they look up to spiritually. Yeah. And that's how I feel about Nancy. It does not take much for me oh, to be man. like, oh my gosh, she thought of me. She read the Bible this morning. I didn't. I should get up. <laughs> If I get her text before I'm out of bed, I'm always like, Downs, oh, don't. Man. Get up. She has already read her Bible. Why are you still in bed? <laughs> that um, was awesome. That, I mean, it is, you lead that so well. Will you, this is a funny question. Yeah. For our friends listening who have sons uh -huh. that are teens, early mm -hmm. 20s, that kind of the generation below you, mm -hmm. will you spout off some dudes yeah. that they should be looking at besides, you said Grant Skeldon, yeah, you, amazing. of course. Uh, what are Who are some of your other bros that like are good examples yeah. for us to be watching as the men of the next generation? Mm, man, one of the first people that comes to mind is Luke Lazan. That's who I yeah. thought too. Oh, I thought Luke. I love Luke. Yeah. Um, he's in Orlando, Florida. Just an amazing, amazing guy. I, You know, this guy is... A little bit older. I would guess he's around your age, a little bit older than me. Jonathan Pakluda. I like I just yeah. think he has such a gift with the next generation yes, and they, such a pulse. Everyone loves him oh, that's in their twenties. Everyone. He's incredible. How? It's just the favorite. I mean, he's very gifted, but it feels like a supernatural thing too, doesn't it? Yeah, and I, I think it's just his genuineness. I mean, yeah. he just makes everybody you have this gift as well. It just makes everyone feel yeah, like the most important person in the room. Mm -hmm. And it is just, yeah, he's amazing. Jonathan Bacluda, he's in uh, Waco, Texas. Camilo Buchanan, he's at yeah. Passion um, I don't know Atlanta. Him. Uh, he's leading their young adults ministry okay. there at Passion, and he is just, uh, he's a great preacher, but I, I, a better man. Um, wow, just okay. really, really great young leader. I think J.D. Rogers is yeah. another guy. I love J.D. Do you know Brian McCormick? At, he just took over uh, Breakaway. I know Breakaway, but I don't know Brian. Uh -uh. Brian, great, great leader. I'm, I've been learning a ton from him. And then I would highly recommend trying to get any of John Mark Comer's books in your kid's hands. Yeah, for sure. I think he just write like his stuff is so brilliant, but he he puts it in a way that's so palatable yeah. and easy to understand. Yeah. Those are the people that immediately come to mind. Yeah. There's so many more that I'm not no, saying. No, that's so but, good. That's so good. And yeah. but we are so it, here. It's so easy for me to find young women mm. for people to look up to and follow just because we have more women sure. around us. But totally. finding good, solid dudes that we can point our little brothers, our sons, yeah. our nephews to mm. is so helpful. That's what um, I love about your book is I'm like, it changed my life this weekend. Uh, so so I'm, I'm excited for all my friends to read it. But also when you're thinking about what you want to hand to yeah. at Christmas. Yep. or what you want to hand to someone who is finishing college or 25, 30 years old that's yeah. figuring out their faith. Yeah, I have a buddy who's newer to faith, and I thought, I should put this in his hands uh, because it just helps you build some 
what is it? Fences, some yeah. gates around your life yeah. that'll keep you who you want to be. I love the illustration Richard Foster uses where he's like, he talks about the farmer uh-huh. and he says, the farmer doesn't do the growing but they just put themselves in the position for the things to grow. Yeah. And that's what that's what habits are. Yeah. It's like like you can't that's make so yourself good. grow in intimacy with Jesus, but if you implement those habits, like God will do the growing yeah. and he'll meet you there while you're doing the habits. That's really so. good. That is such a good reminder. I I think a lot when people ask me, how do you stay connected to Jesus? Hmm. I always talk about tying yourself to the mast of the ship, yeah, like that Greek mm-hmm. um, mythology. And the the habits to me, your holy habits yeah. you listed are the ropes hmm. to me. The, the, we yeah. tie ourselves. Amen. God ties himself to us, and, and yeah. Jesus did this for us. And so grace is everywhere. But if there's anything we can do. It's these habits. Amen. Anything we didn't say about the book that you want to say? Comes out tomorrow? Yeah, crazy. I mean, oh book my goodness. launch day. Okay, do you know how I feel about the night before a book launch? Let no. me remind you. Okay. If you've heard me say it, I'm going to say it to you again. Please. Tonight is the night you and Maddie should celebrate. Okay. Because tomorrow when the book comes out, it Chaos. is not longer yours. It's ours. Yeah. Tonight, it's still yours. And yeah. tonight is when you celebrate that you did the obedient thing. Ah, uh, that's so smart. Numbers, whatever. You can not you, you can celebrate those. I hope there's something to celebrate. Any yeah. book in hands is something worth celebrating. Yeah. So you will have plenty of time to celebrate the book being out. Yeah. Tonight, you get to celebrate the book uh, that's so existing because you were obedient. Yeah. Well, so, we're going on a date. Okay, great. Good. I'm so glad. <laughs> so, um, where are y'all going to eat? Do you know? Uh, yeah. The Optimist. Have you Dude. been there? When I tell you, I'm also, I am literally eating there tonight. No yes, way. Yes, it is so good. It is so good. You, Have you been? We go every year for my birthday. Oh, great. It's so, the best. That bread, get in my life. Get in my life. We, I cannot wait. The first time we ever visited Nashville, someone was like, go to The Optimist. And now we go as much it's as we so can. It's so good. It's so good. I'm glad that's what you are doing. Okay, there's one more person we need to sing the praises of. Yeah. Tom Dean. Oh, your agent. Wow. Formerly in the publishing world. Yeah. So everyone who's been publishing books for the last yeah. decade loves him. He's just a love gift. Him. I, He's amazing. I Yeah, I want to adopt him. If I, that, is that possible? <laughs> uh, he is just, I mean, right literally this morning sent me like a prayer. Yeah. Um, just yeah. not over the book, just over our life and our family. Yeah. I mean, he is so good at what he does, but yeah. he just... Uh, you can tell he's been with Jesus. Yeah, and, that's right. Um, I want more people like that in my yeah. life. So. He loves Jesus. He loves the written word. Yeah. He loves authors. Yeah. Like he really cares for our souls. Yep. And he knows the industry. Yes. And so therefore, it's he's a win, just win, the win. kindest. Every time I see him, I'm just... <laughs> so I, when I saw you thank him in the back of the book, yeah. I was like, oh, of course, of he's, course you're partnered with Tom Dean. Okay, the last thing we always ask. Yeah. Because the show is called That Sounds Fun, Noah, tell me what sounds fun to you. Oh, man. What sounds fun is teaching my my son who's two years old how to golf <gasps> i was just, hoping you'd say that oh we just got him these little plastic yes. uh clubs and he mostly hits our dog with them right now <laughs> we're trying to <laughs> teach him that that's not what they're for better um, than hitting mila though yes yeah, oh he not knows your sister. <laughs> he knows better um but uh yeah i just i love spending time with him his personality is like just coming out more and more every day yeah. and my wife and i we we both love to play golf and so I'm really looking forward to like the next couple years of him just being able to use yeah. those little clubs yeah. and just spending our Sabbath outside yes. just hanging out. My so. three-year-old nephew called me, FaceTimed me this weekend, and he, I'd already seen a picture of him golfing with my dad. Okay. And I said, uh, ah, did you did you golf today? He said, I did not golf. I had a golf lesson. <laughs> and I was like, who gives three-year-olds golf lessons? That kid's going to be on tour. <laughs> That's like, that is insane. That is amazing. My dad, my dad is crazy. He's but I was like, that is so cute that he had like <laughs> a lesson with my dad. Um, also, I'm going to pick up golf in 2024. I've decided. No way. It's my next sport. There's so many great courses here. I know. And Let's go play. Okay, I want to. That's my goal. I have some of my friends that are in high school. I promise them before they graduate next spring, okay. so spring of 25, okay. I have a year, I'll play around. It seems great. And your wife plays too. Maddie loves it. Oh, okay. Like, I'm thinking even if the game doesn't go well, Yeah. you're outside. You're outside. You're with people that you enjoy enough to go spend four hours with yes. at a golf course. Yes. There's snacks. There's are sa- you serious? True or false? Aren't there carts that have beverages and hot dogs? They drive around. Okay, they see, come to this you. This is it. This is it. It's is someone amazing. driving and delivering me a hot dog while it I'm playing an outdoor amazing. sport. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's expensive though, right? It can be. That's the thing though. Nashville has a lot of like pretty affordable courses. Okay. Like I would say depending on the person, but but to me, like a fair price for like a decent course is between forty and sixty dollars. But for it's four 18? hours. Yeah, for eighteen holes. Okay. It, it takes about four hours to play. Now there are some really nice courses in Nashville too where, where you would pay hundred, two hundred dollars to play. And so that can get expensive for sure. But the courses that we play the most are about fifty bucks. Okay. And for for four hours of fun, I'm like, I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. Next year, can we put can we golf? Let's put it go. on your 24 Come list. On. We're gonna do it because I I don't have time before New York. I don't yeah. have a lot of time in New York, so it'll be like my first lessons will be like December, so <laughs> which is a weird time. You're doing it the right way. Do the lessons first. That's so you what can't Cody Carn said. He was like, you've got to start with yes. lessons. Lessons okay. is the way. How many do I have to have? You know, I think if you went for like a couple weeks, once a week, like okay. like maybe four or five lessons would okay. would just get you going, and then from there it's just like practicing the things that you learn. I mean, if I I have friends who are amazing golfers and they're still getting lessons because they're like trying to just, you know, change little tiny things, but four or five and then just practicing consistently and you'll get good really fast. Okay, great. Yeah. Golfing in our future. Come on. Noah, thanks for being on the pod. Such an honor. I'm so, same. I feel so honored. I'm so glad that our friends get to meet you if they don't already know you and grab a copy of Holy Habits. This was so fun. It was fun. I loved it. (laughs) Oh, friends, isn't he so great? Listen, There is so much hope in the leaders and the generations coming up behind us. I am so, so thankful for Noah. Oh, I just think the world of him. Don't you love him? I know. I know. Don't you love him? And can you believe his church launched yesterday and his book launches tomorrow? That is a week for our boy Noah. Listen, go order your copy of Holy Habits. Get you a couple. Put them in your closet. Get them as gifts for Christmas. Just go ahead and grab them. And go follow him on social media. Tell him thanks for being on the show, how much this conversation meant to you. And make sure you tell him congratulations on being obedient to what the Lord has done in his life. If you need anything else from me, you know I'm embarrassingly easy to find. Any up downs on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the places you may need me. That is how you can find me. And don't forget, you can find the That Sounds Fun podcast on Instagram at That Sounds Fun Podcast. I think that's it for me today, friends. Go out or stay home and do something that sounds fun to you, and I will do the same. Today, what sounds fun to me is I'm meeting up with a friend who got engaged to celebrate her engagement after work. I am very excited, so that sounds fun to me to see her and to celebrate. Y'all have a great week. We will see you back here on Thursday. Let's keep that next-gen conversation going with my friend Madison Pruitt-Trout. We'll see you on Thursday.